so why am I making a bow? You know, I made probably five or six bows last year, uh, learned a lot, just got into it, and then uh, I was able to accomplish my goal of getting a white-tailed deer with a self bow, uh, with making my own arrows as well, and it was, God honest truth, one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done. Uh, there's just something about that, uh, you know, the more difficult the task, always the better you feel about it, but it was just, I, just something I had to work on for so long, and then it was just something new, and I just developed so much respect for traditional archers and trying to learn it and everything. It's so hard, guys. I mean, you just got to get close or be an incredible, incredible shot, uh, but even then, your arrows are just a lot slower. It's a lot harder to, to fool a whitetail uh, with the trad bow. So I am trying to make one every season. I'm going to try to make a functional bow every season that I use, get a deer with, I retire it, uh, and hopefully one day have a wall of these things just hanging. And my trophies now are going to be whatever, like whatever steps out in front of that arrow and uh, whatever that arrow passes through, that, that's a trophy to me. I've really changed my perspective on uh, deer hunting and trying to get big deer uh, over the last uh, season, really, because that little six point buck that I shot, I remember more than most of my other deer that I've shot. It was just boom, 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 boom. So that's my goal and that's why I'm working on this one. This is Osage that is about a year and a half old. It's got some nasty knots in it that I hate. I'm gonna try to work around it. This bow may not even be viable when I get done with it, but I just don't have that much wood on hand. So I'm going to, one of these days I'll, I'll find the perfect piece of Osage. Uh, and I could have bought a stave, but I wanted to harvest the wood myself, so I did. Uh, and I made another bow that shoots really good, that's 60 pounds uh, out of this same log. Uh, so it's basically like it has a twin, you know, if they, if they were like wands in the wizard world, they'd be twins uh, But I made it for the guy that let me take his trees off his land Now I'm trying to duplicate that model because it was about 61 inches Felt really good shot. Well, it was a little harsh in the hand with a bend through but it shot really well, so That's what I'm trying to do here guys and uh it is tough. It is tough work. I'm trying to break through these knots. Uh, and this is actually not a draw knife. It's a, a skinning tool, but it works pretty good at busting through this stuff. A little bit nastier stuff. So there's really no way that I'll be able to uh, get this bow figured out today. I'm just kind of working on it and seeing if it's going to be a viable bow or not. If these knots are going to cooperate and I might get like 14 hours of work in this thing and I bend it back and it just breaks and that's just part of it. Um, but I've learned, I've learned a ton and next time I go to harvest a tree, it will, it will be the most perfect tree that I can find. I was really just thinking, oh, I could just take any tree and figure it out. And now I've, I've just learned a ton. So this is going to be hopefully the bow that I take down a white-tailed deer with this year. But if it breaks, I'll make another one. Basically a workable stave now. It was a chunk of lumber. Now it's a workable stave and I'm going to start shaping it with a rasp and basically get it to where it starts to bend, just barely starts to bend. Uh, terrible knots in it, but taking out a lot of nasty spots. One side of it is perfect, like 
the wood is awesome. The other side is super knotty. It's just real knotty. It's a knotty piece of wood. got a bad knot it is cracked on the outer uh, layers it hasn't cracked the the uh, back layer the back of the bow yet but we're about to see where it's gonna break I don't think this bow is gonna make it it's just I think it's gonna pull apart at the the backing right there that knots just too bad just can't work with that Fifteen hours worth of firewood. stave laying around for over a year. A local boyer named Austin gave it to me. I had a hickory one that was similar. I kept the limbs wide but I didn't back it and I should have backed it because it broke. Pretty much every bow I, I make breaks. I'm just searching for that one that does not. That is magic. But I'm gonna start working on this one here. I've been just taking big chunks out with chisel and some other big tools. I'm going to try to make this about an inch and a half wide to see where it goes. I want it to be somewhere around 50 to 55. We'll see what happens. So, after an afternoon of crafting, taking my time with it, we now have, it's a bow now. It's no longer a stave. And the initial bend on it, this thing was at 61 pounds, but it still needs a lot of work in getting the correct even bend. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut out the handle. What is so different between the Bowdark bow, the Osage bow that I was making that broke, and this one is, this one is straight, straight grain. Osage, you, you have to go with the feel of the bow. You gotta go with the flow of the bow. 
you got to look at each little uh, you know twist and turn go with that grain and it's more feel than anything this you can work more like a piece of lumber and you can lay it out you can be more mathematical about it uh, and draw exactly what you want on the back of the bow and then cut it out you know carve it out like a pumpkin with Osage it's just more feel and I like that. I like that more about Osage, but for me not having that much experience, it's obviously a lot easier to make one of these because you can measure it out and just by doing math, you can get a more even bend and um, you know, less room for error basically. And my goal for this by the end of this video is to have this thing shooting arrows. It's not going to be finished. I'm going to be tuning and probably adding a backing to this, definitely adding a backing to this, but I want to be able to uh, get a pretty even bin and, and uh, start shooting some arrows through it. And hopefully, guys, this is going to be my 2023 uh, initial bow harvest bow right here. So, come on, come on. Hold up, don't break. the handle roughly shaped out we'll put it on the tillering tree and we'll just look for an even bend once it gets pretty close I'm gonna probably round off the edges on the handle and stick an arrow and a string on it and see what we can do so not too far away from getting an arrow through this thing and flying out of target It's looking pretty decently straight and has an even bend right now. Still got a lot to take out uh, in, in the mid limbs and then close to the tips, but we're right around 60 pounds, which is good because I want this bow to be about 55. I'm a little worried it's gonna end up around 50. That's still okay. I'm definitely going to take uh, some deer skin and I'm gonna make a backing on this so we don't have any splintering and it might add add some extra weight to it as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take some, uh, I'm gonna just take a, a little rasp and take a little off the limbs, the mid and, and the tips. And then I'm also going to um, cut some knocks in it and then we'll put a string on it and then pull it back a couple times on the tiller tree, make sure we're even and then shoot some arrows. big moment right here. I've got an actual string that I measured that I like that is about maybe even a hair over brace height. This stuff's got some, this wood has some set so 
Let's find out. Let's find out if this one's gonna break, huh? Got it tillered good enough where it should hold this. It's pretty much full brace right there. like we are very close guys very close looks like I need to take off a smidge I don't know I might go measure it's really close scraper I busted one strand of my string I hope that's all right we'll see there's 52 I'm not even at 28 right there so that's 52 at like 23 24 54 at 25 so I think we'll definitely be around 60 at 28 inches which is about my draw it's actually a little less than that the way I've been shooting with most bows knock to knock this is only 61 inches so I can't stretch it out too far but I just want to be able to hold about right there on my chin it's where I like I like to anchor so 54 Put an arrow in it. Okay, ladies and gents, this is the this is the moment right here. Let's see which side. It's actually it's favoring this side. Is it the strong side or the weak side? I can't remember. feels like a brick right now. Feels like a brick. Shot straight. Not a lot of noise, but I think I still got some <laughs> still got some tailoring to do on it. Works, it shoots. I actually like the way it shoots. It doesn't feel laggy at this point. It is not bad, y'all. Not bad. Feels good in the hand. Ended up liking the handle uh, width. Everything feels good on it. I mean, it's sitting, the string is sitting. Um, just barely on that on the one side which is nice uh, that way I don't have to put a shelf in this thing I'm gonna shoot it off the knuckle I think that's how I'm gonna make most of my bows just primitive and if I want to get into putting shelves on it and all that then I'll just get like a I'll just go buy a traditional bow 
But for me, th this style is just as primitive as it gets, and I really like it. So, I've also learned to be very patient with bows. You know, I rushed my, my first bow in this video because I wasn't really confident that uh, it was gonna hold up. I really just wanted to see, so I kind of rushed it. Of course, we found out it would not hold up. This has a good back on it. And I wanna show you guys something. I don't know if you could see this starting to fleck right here. That is the, I believe what's called the cam cambrium, um, some sort of word like that. And it's basically the layer in between the bark and the actual back of the bow or the tree. Uh, so I'm gonna go in and I'm going to take all of that off and that's actually gonna make it slightly uneven on the back. There's gonna be little dips and valleys, but I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna score it and score the outside, basically scrape it up, and I'm gonna add some rawhide to it. So I made some rawhide uh, out of one of my deer last year, and I think I'm gonna add that to this. And that is, a, that is a, a week or two process, getting it to dry and doing it properly. One thing I've learned is don't rush, don't rush these bows. You get excited because you're like, oh, it's bending, it's bending. I'm gonna, I want to go shoot it. I, you know, let's let's start flinging a bunch of arrows. But if your tiller's not right, it's just not good for the bow. And you know, rushing it with big tools and, and things like that, trying to make it go faster, you usually end up making some mistakes. So I'm gonna take my time with the with the rest of the construction of this bow. Once I get the backing on it, then I'll tiller it even more and get it exactly how I want it, but I want to make sure I do have a backing and this bow is going to make it to hunting season. That, that's my goal. I, I really like this bow, the way it's turning out, so I think I want to make this uh, the bow that I sit in a deer blind with. It's not crazy, crazy big. I think I can, think I can get it done here, maybe a tree stand, and go with it. It would be pretty cool to say I killed a deer with a hackberry bow as well. You know, most of, most of the bows out there are Osage, Hickory, and Hackberry. Let me show you what a Hackberry tree looks like, actually. This is a Hackberry tree growing in my yard, right by the chicken coop. A lot of these trees you'll see are pretty straight. So they make good bow wood, and they have that white on the inside, which is, is kind of unique as well. And they're very bumpy. And I, I guess the seeds are edible. Uh, because I do see these all over Texas fence lines. And trees that go, grow on fence lines are most often from birds eating the seeds of the trees. They fly and they perch on the, uh, the fence, they poop, and then the seeds start growing. So that's why if you ever see just trees after trees after trees growing on a fence, uh, multiple varieties, it's because of that, because birds are carrying those seeds. So I'm assuming that they're edible, uh, but they look terrible. I wouldn't eat one. And um, the bark is just real bumpy. It's real coarse. I think I'm gonna end the video right here, guys. I think this is my bow, my 2023 hunting, primitive hunting bow. Smash that like button for, well, not giving up, all right? Not giving up. And I'll continue to make this bow even better and keep you guys updated, so. Thanks very much, and I'll see you on another outdoor adventure.